Hey everybody, today Rado runs through Alien Frontiers and its expansion, Alien Frontiers Factions. Okie dokie. Now, I should say right off the bat that if you're only watching this video for the information about the expansion, sorry, I'm going to be doing this run through today demonstrating everything, the base game and the expansion. And by the same token, if you don't really know about the expansion, you just want to learn about the base game, I will do my best to try to point out when I'm doing extra stuff that is not available in the base game, because the expansion adds a few neat things. So with that out of the way, let's jump into it. Now, this is a game of colonization of this far away planet uh, by players using dice. At the beginning of the game, everybody has three dice, and these represent ships. We roll them, and then we can dock them in all the various spaceports that are all around this planet. So we could dock over here and start working on colonies, you know, these little neat things that we could then put down on the planet and start to colonize the planet. Or we could dock over here and, and at the solar converter and get some energy to do things we need to do. We can go explore the alien ship by docking over here and getting special alien technology cards that'll give us all kinds of cool special abilities. There's a lot of stuff we can do and it's all it, towards the purpose of building these colonies. Because once one player has gotten all of their colonies deployed onto the planet, the game is over. And at that point, whoever has the most points wins. Although, you know, things are going to be shifting all over the place. You know, colonies get moved around. People, you know, take control over certain areas. There's all kinds of stuff that'll happen. I'll try to demonstrate a little bit of everything. Although, before I go, there's one other caveat I should mention. I've got this deluxe version of the game that has these colonies that are really, really awesome looking. They look like these little, you know, cities inside of bubbles. The base game, and I believe this is still the case, if you go out and buy the base game, actually comes with these wooden tokens as colonies. Doesn't change anything about gameplay, just so you know, I've got a slightly more deluxe version. I've also got these little plastic things, instead of just putting down this uh, positronic field indicator, I can put this thing down to indicate there's a positronic field. So there's some slightly better than normal looking stuff in the game, but enough of that. Let's actually start playing. Oh wait, no, actually before we start playing, a couple more things to mention. So the board is set up. We, we're about to start playing. We got our three dice there. And at the beginning of the game, everybody in the regular game gets one artifact. My special artifact is I have a temporal warper, which means I can pay energy to re-roll my dice. If I roll my dice and I don't like them, I can re-roll. Very, very useful in a worker placement dice game. Jen's special card is the alien city that she has already found. As long as she has this card at the end of the game, she gets plus one point. So actually, by having this card, Jen actually has one point right now. She is in the lead. Although you never know, I might steal this from her using the Raiders Outpost, who knows. Now, as part of the factions expansion, there's a little bit of additional stuff we have. Each of us has our own special docking facility. You know, that are in addition to all the ones out there that give us our own special ability and adds another function to the game. Now, at the beginning of the game, before the game starts, everybody gets the, basically, there's a number of factions plus one player. The last player picks one and then the next player. So everybody gets to choose. Uh, and if you're the last player, you have a lot more to choose from. Now, I've already gotten that. And at the end of it, my special faction board is the Iranian Syndicate. I am a member of the Space Mobsters, basically. And what that means is, my special power, whenever there is an area that is contested, like say, both Jen and I have two colonies over here in the Bradbury Plateau. Now normally, if, if I had two and Jen had one, I would be in control of this region and I would get this as a reminder that I've got a special ability. But if, if it ever works out that you know, we're contested, then this comes back here because nobody controls it and nobody gets a special power. My special power is once per turn, I can pick one special power from one of the regions that's contested and use it as if it's my own because I've got control in chaos. That's my special power. Also, there is, you know, we can dock our dice in these zones all over the board to do special things. People can dock at my syndicate satellite here. If any, if Jen does it, she has to pay me a solar power. If I do it, I don't have to pay. And the special power of this is, what is the special power? I think, oh, um, actually, I'm going to have to look it up. Oh, I should have looked that up before I started playing, huh? I remember the special power of the uranium. All right. 
The player docked at the Iranian syndicate pays one or to move one of their own colony markers. Um, oh, yeah, so that's my other thing. If I wanted to, say a situation was like this, and Jen is in control of the Bladbury Plateau, I could come here, I could pay an ore, and that would let me move my own colony in here, and then, hey, now it's contested control. Um, and if, um, if somebody pays two ore, they can move somebody else's colony out. So that's a little bit, so this thing is all about area control on the planet. Jen's special power is she's a member of the scavenger fleet, which means normally whenever you construct a new ship, at the beginning of the game we have three ships, but we can build extra ones. Normally you don't get to use that extra one until the next round. But the scavengers, they can use them immediately. As soon as they're built, they can be activated. And then the scavenger special ability is, well I think, is this for the orbital market? Or is it for the colony constructor? Arg. Or is it the terraforming station? Again, I gotta look. Alrighty, scavenger. If somebody goes and activates the scavenger fleet, where is it in the manual? Come on, da da da. Scavenger fleet, okay. Player docks a scavenger fleet may dock two unequal ships at shipyard. Oh, okay, yeah, no. Normally, if we want to build, this is one of the places we can go. If we wanna build another ship, and of course, building more ships is great because you have more ships, you have more control, more power. You have to play a pair. Any two matching dice to the shipyard would let you activate the shipyard. If you come here and activate this thing, then you could put any two dice here and you don't have to worry about a pair. So the scavenger fleet can help, um, and you know, I can use it, but I'd have to pay Jen, or Jen can use it for free, so it's easier to actually get additional ships. Okay, and then, but wait, there is more! In addition to these faction boards, which is only part of the expansion, we also get two secret objectives. Now these are secret, they're face down. Nobody knows what they are, but I'm just gonna leave them face up so I don't forget them. And each of these cards has two things. There is an in-game objective, which uh, basically whenever you achieve whatever this is, when you move colonies so that you and your opponent both gain victory points, you may reveal this card and immediately score a victory point. On the other hand, if at the game end you control the Burrow Desert, you can reveal this and score a victory point. And uh, when you roll four of a kind without using any tech, you can reveal this and score a victory point. Or at the game's end, if you control the Van Gogh Mountains, reveal this. So, these give me a couple of goals I could shoot for to earn extra points. And Jen, she's got a couple as well, but secret, we don't know what they are. Okay, now I think that's enough. Uh, you guys know the basics, how uh, the game is all set up, and with the expansion, there are these additional things. Secret objectives, and also, ba -ba -ba -ba, special bonus actions. I'll be the first player, and you can tell that because Jen, she starts with a, a bonus extra bit of solar power to make up the fact that I'm gonna go first. Every turn, it's really simple. You roll all your dice, and then you pilot them and, and dock them with various, well, with all the different satellites. Let's see what I get. I got a one, a three, and a five. Okay, right off the bat, I did not get a pair. So that means I can't use the shipyard, which needs a pair. If I wanted to use the colony constructor and build another colony to put on the planet, I would need three of a kind. So I can't do that either. If I want to use the orbital market, which lets me basically convert um, solar power, which is easier to get, into um, you know, actual raw building material, I would need a pair. Also, in the expansion, in addition to just being able to convert solar energy into raw materials, you can also go to the orbital market to get more secret agendas. However, I can't do it, because again, I don't have a pair. So right off the bat, half of the board is unavailable to me. Let's see, what else? I cannot use the terraforming station, because you have to have a perfect six to be able to do that. I can't use the Raiders outpost because you have to have a straight. It has to be a one, two, three, or a, or a two, three, four, or a three, four, five, or, or four, five, six. I don't have that, so I can't use the Raiders outpost and steal stuff from Jen. So, because of this roll, although remember, if I wanted, I could pay some solar power and re-roll. However, I don't have any solar power. I think, because of my special power, I want to get some solar power on hand so I can re-roll if I need it. So I think for starters, I'm going to come up here to the solar collector. Now, nobody else gets to go until I place all three of my dice. And I could just place all of them up here. I could place this one, which would get me a, a single solar. And I could place my three, which would get me two more. And then I could place my five. Oops. And that would give me three more. So I could just place all three of these here and get six solar energy. Which is pretty nice. I mean, then I'd have a lot of power. Later on, I could convert it into ore over here at the orbital market, et cetera, et cetera. But you know what? Let's see, what else could I do? Is there anything else of interest? 
I'm gonna, okay, I am gonna put the three and the five down because that will get me, you know, a three gets me two and the five, so that'll give me five solar energy. All right, so I've got five solar energy. And I've still got my one. Now, if I wanted, I've got some solar energy now. So I could use this, and I could re-roll this and maybe get it to be something else good. But you know what, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna save that for when I really wanna roll. Like, so I could, if I'm really close to getting uh, three of a kind, I could re-roll and, and get that three of a kind. So, you know, if I get lucky. So for this last one, I'm gonna come over here to the lunar mine. And you can put anything down here, any die into one of these spots, as long as it's greater than or equal to a die that was previously placed there. Since I'm the first one here, I can place, and I get one ore. So at the end of my turn, I've gotten five solar energy and one ore. I haven't used my special power, haven't done anything that would let me reveal my secret, uh, you know, end goals. And, um, right, so I'm done. Now it is Jen's turn, so off she will go. She's gonna roll her dice. And she gets a one, three, and a four. Still no pairs. Let's see here. And no straight, so she can't do that. Uh, okay, so what does she wanna do? Well, wherever, po well, actually, let's say, okay, I know what she's gonna do. She is going to place uh, one of her ships, doesn't really matter which. She's gonna put it in her own. Now remember, normally in the base game, you would, this would not be available. This is a special faction space. Jen is gonna go to her own faction board. And since it's her own, she does not have to pay. If I'd come here, it would have cost me. But then I would block it so Jen couldn't use it. But I didn't come here. I went and did other stuff. Actually, that would have been interesting. Well, actually, anyway, so she's gonna come here. It doesn't cost her anything. And um, the special power of this is if you put a uh, uh, die here, you could then put any two dice in the shipyard. Remember, normally it has to be a pair, but because Jen used the scavenger fleet, it doesn't. And so, by going there, Oh wait, wait, actually, Jen could build a ship. However, she can't yet, because to build her fourth ship, she needs a solar and a, uh, a what do you call it, um, ore. And Jen doesn't have any ore yet. So even though, that would have been a cool move, if I would have thought about it for half a second, I was just so excited to show off an ability and knock stuff around, oopsie doo. But of course, Jen can't do this because she wants some more. Now, to use her special power, she needs some more. She's already got, so I think the first thing she wants to do is get some more. Now, so she could put any of her three dice on the lunar mine, because I put such a low value, she could put a one here as well, because it has to be equal to or greater, and so she's got ore. Now she's got everything she needs to make another ship. Unfortunately, she doesn't have enough ships left, because she, she uh, can't put a non-matching one. If she activated it, then she would only have one ship left and couldn't go to the shipyard. So anyway, so she's got some ore, and what does she want to do with these last two dice? A three and a four. <laughs> I think... She could actually start working on a colony. That wouldn't be bad. Yeah, with that, because she's going to do that. So, first of all, she's going to dock at the colonist hub. And what that means is she is going to start working on building a colony that she could deploy down on the planet. So, we go on ahead and we take this little marker here and we show. Now, this is going to take her a while to build this. It's going to take her one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. She has to play seven dice to uh, and slowly build this thing. But once it's built, or you know, once it's constructed, she could then, by spending a uh, solar and, uh, and an ore, could actually put that down the planet. And remember, the whole point of this game is getting your colonies onto the planet. And right off the bat, there's a couple ways to do it. Or three ways you could do it. You could do the slow and steady. Just, you know, slowly build the thing by spending dice over multiple turns. If you ever get three of a kind, you could spend a lot of ore and immediately build one. Or if you get a six, you can come over here to the terraforming station. And again, you need to have the resources to do it. And the interesting thing about this, the terraforming station means you use your six and you lose that ship. You basically, this is, shows a picture of it, you dismantle that ship so you lose one of your dice, but it's a quick shortcut to get a colony onto the table. So there's three ways you can do it. And Jen, she's going to start working on it. And her other die, she's going to continue working on it. Boom. So she is, uh, she's two steps of seven towards getting her first colony. All right, so that was Jen's turn. My turn again. I pick up all my dice. So, and if I had been blocking spaces, now those spaces are available again to other players. Now let's see what I roll. All righty. A four, a five, and a five. Now, if this were just a six, I could actually place it in the Raiders Outpost and steal, well, I could steal Jen's Alien City or I could steal some of her stuff. But I didn't quite make that. Hmm. 
But I think what I want to do is what Jen was actually thinking about doing last turn. I am going to take this four and put it in Jen's scavenger fleet. And now that means I have to pay Jen one solar. So now she's got two, but it means I now have the uh, have access to the scavenger fleet special power, which is, um, wait a minute. Oh, actually, wait a minute. Ah, I need to pay more attention. I have a pair. I have a four, a five, and a five. I don't need to use Jen's scavenger fleet. I have a pair. I'm going to go to the shipyard. <laughs> oh, I'm just totally spacing. Sorry about that, folks. With a pair, I get to go to the shipyard. This pair could let me go to the market instead and you know um, get more ore by trading in some of my solar power or to get more objectives, but I'm going to go to the shipyard and get myself another ship. Now I put the pair and I have to play one uh, solar and one ore to get my fourth ship. So there goes the ore I got. Here's one of my mini solars and I get a new ship. Now I don't get to use this ship right away. It goes into the maintenance bay and I'll get to use it on my next turn. And now that leaves me with one die left over. <laughs> Okay, I could get some more ore because a four is greater than a one. I could start working on my own colonist space. Uh, a four all by itself. See, if I want to get alien artifacts, I have to put cards uh, equal to or greater than eight. So four by itself won't let me get another alien artifact, which would be nice. I think I will start, so Jen's working on, I'm going to start working on my own colonist. There we go. Okay, so that was it. That was my turn. Jen's turn again. She takes her dice, she rolls them, a one, two, and a six. And see, now Jen's got what she needs. Remember last turn she wanted to activate her scavenger fleet so she could place two non-matching things and build a ship? Bum, bum, bum. I have blocked it. So, because I'm in there, until I get out of there, Jen can't use her special power, which is really bummed by. Now, I should say, by the way, in a two, in, with more players, uh, there are more spaces. But in a two-player game, as you can see, a lot of spaces get, uh, you know, uh, the board gets tightened up over here, over here, over here, and over here, and one over there. So the board gets tightened up quite a bit the, the, when there are fewer players. So I'm blocking the shipyard. Jen can't use it even though she now has the resources she needs. And that's a big part of the game, trying to get where you need to go before somebody else does. Now, Jen does have a six. She could use the terraforming station to destroy this ship, but there's a rule. You cannot destroy, um, you cannot you know, gobble up one of your own ships to build a colony unless, if it would mean you would have less than two ships remaining. So until Jen builds another ship, she can't terraform. So what else does she want to do? <laughs> Let's see. I think... You know what? I think she's going to grab an alien artifact. So, she's going to take this 6 plus this 2. That's a total of 8. She's going to dock these two ships over at the alien spacecraft. Because again, greater than or equal to 8 means... Now, actually, it's interesting. First of all, let's go this a little bit. There's a little bit more detail here. If she wanted to, she could dock this 2. And whenever you put any ship here, that means you could get rid of these three cards and reshuffle and try to get something else. So, if Jen didn't like any of these cards, she could dump them and draw three more. Let's see, uh, experimental faster than light drive, holographic decoy, and seismic detonator. Hmm. Now this is an interesting one. I think this one came in the expansion, if I recall correctly. This one lets you, you have to discard this card, so it's, it's it actually removed from the game, so it's a one-time use. And basically you move all of the colonies in one territory, so basically you set up a bomb on the planet and you scare all the colonies away. This holographic decoy means you can never have your stuff stolen by raiders, so that's pretty nice. And the faster than light drive means you can pay uh, sunshine, you can, you can pay solar power, and um, change the value of any die. So that's really nice too. You know what? These are both really nice. I don't think Jen is going to reshuffle. So she's just going to go ahead and play another die here. Now that means she could have reshuffled if she didn't like it with the three things that came out. She could reshuffle again. Uh, because as many dice as you put there, you can keep reshuffling. However, she's happy with those. And since she's put a grand total value of eight here, she now can take one of these cards. And I think she'll go on ahead and grab the holographic decoy because that means I can now not use the raider's outposts to steal her stuff. I will not be able to steal the alien city as long as Jen has this card. Um, opponents may, or actually wait, no, 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 I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I lied. I cannot steal from her any of her resources she builds up. And if I, um, if I try to steal Jen's alien city, I end up stealing the decoy instead. So Jen's alien city is protected now. And she's still got one die. 
And it's a Mighty One. Coming over here would get her one solar power. I think she's going to just come to the, the mine, since uh, she can. And she's going to get another ore. All right, so that was her turn. My turn again. And now I've got four dice. And I've cleared out the shipyard so that Jen will be able to get in there too. What do I got? A one, two, three. Oh my gosh, a one, two, three, four. Look at that. There's a straight. And remember how I was just talking about how um, you know, I have a straight, so I could actually take this one, two, three, or this two, three, four to the Raiders Outpost, and I could steal Jen's stuff. Now, because of the holographic decoy, I cannot take her resources. And if I tried to steal, I can't take the alien city, but I could take the decoy, which means in turn, Jen could not steal my stuff. So that's actually really interesting. I wonder if I want to do that. Well, let's see, what else might I want to do? It's a straight, I didn't get any pairs, unfortunately. Now remember, I could re-roll. I could pay a sunshine and re-roll any number of dice and try to get something else. If I, and if I had two pair, mm, uh, hmm. <laughs> I do like just getting this holographic decoy. That's actually kind of nice. And that still leaves me with a four, so I could just go on ahead and get some more stuff. I think I will. I'm going to play this one, two, three. And so I'm stealing. And now, if there were more players, I could steal any combination of solar and ore from any combination of players. But since there's only me and Jen, that means I steal everything from her. But because of the decoy, I can't take her resources, which I would. Even though I'd only be getting three of the four I could take, that'd be a pretty crushing blow to Jen for me to take all her stuff. But I can't, and instead, I will take this holographic decoy. And now my temporal warper and my stuff is protected from Jen stealing. And I've still got one more die. It's a single four now. Oh, oh, by the way, I'm sorry. When Jen took this, a new card came out. It was the uh, Astrogation Servo. Pay two sunshine to take any one ship from, um, oh, from the maintenance bay and use it as your own. Oh, wow. So I could use anybody's uh, ship if they're sitting over there. So that's actually pretty cool. But anyway, what am I going to do with this four? I could continue to focus on expand, working on my colonists because I got to get a colony down on the. You got to get all our colonies out, or I think I'm going to get some more ore, and I can place this here because it's equal to or greater than what Jen had previously placed. But now that this is here, if Jen wants to get more ore, she would have to play a uh, four, five, or six. Anyway, so I've got another ore, and I am done. All right, so it's Jen's turn. She gets her three dice back. Let's see what she gets. All right. Uh, oh, she's got two pair. So she doesn't even have to use her special ability. She is definitely going to get her own ship. So it goes over there. And remember, it took her a sunshine and an ore to build it. And so her next turn, she'll have four ships like I do. And then she's still got this six. What is she going to do with that six? Hmm. Okay. Well, a six means she could get more ore, or on the flip side, she can come over here. What the heck? She's going to come over here and get three sunshine. She's got a nice bit of three. And that was Jen's turn. She's kind of spread all over the place. Now it's my turn again. I get to roll my four dice. And a two, three, three. Oh, I got a pair. Now, unfortunately, I can't get into the shipyard to get another ship. Although, you know, although I don't have, I would need two, to get my fifth die, I would need two sunshine and two ore. So I couldn't even do it even if I want to, even if Jen wasn't blocking. But what else can I do? Oh, that's kind of cool. What the heck? Let's do this. I'm going to take uh, eight, a total of eight, and grab another alien artifact. And I'm going to grab this astro uh, astrogation servo that just came out. Okay. And so now these are three cards I have that I can use anytime I want. Uh, you know, if, if I, for the top ability, I have to tap them, which means I can only use them once per turn. And they all have a bottom ability too, which if I do that to discard, if, if I, these two, I should say, have a special ability if I discard them, discard this card to send all ships docked, oh, in one orbital facility. So if ever I need to, I could discard this card. I could lose it, and I could bump people out of where I, where I need to go. But what's more interesting, the reason I've dumped this right now is because I'm going to use this thing's ability immediately. I'm going to pay two sunshine, which means it's tapped, so I can't use it again this turn. And I can take any one ship from the maintenance yard, roll it, and use it as one of my own. The ship may not be used to the terraforming station. So you'll notice Jen just put a new ship in the maintenance bay. I'm going to get to use her ship. And I got a, I've got a two, three, four. Oh my gosh. Wow. How nasty is that? There's a straight. I'm going to use Jen's own ship 
to go to the rating outpost, and now I've got a choice. Jen is no longer protected by the holographic decoy, so I could take all of her resources, which is terrible, or I could take this alien city and score a point. Basically, it's a net two points, because Jen would lose a point and I would gain a point. Oh my gosh, what do I want to do? Do I want to steal all her stuff that she's taken a while to build up? Or do I want to take steal two points worth? You know what, I'm going to leave this. I could always steal this later. I'm going to steal this stuff right now. Because you know, if I took the other thing, you know, Jen might try to come for it. Because of my holographic decoy, I can't, can't take any of that. So, bam. And talk about insult to injury. I used Jen's own ship to steal from her. Thanks to the astrogation servo. Alrighty, and so, and so now it's Jen's turn again, and oh, she is ticked off. She's got her four dice, she's gonna get to roll, and she's got two fives. She's got, she's got two pair, wouldn't that be nice? She can get another ship, except of course, I just stole all of her resources. So she's gonna have to figure out what to do now, and if you'd like to find out, you can hit the button that's on screen and go to Extended Play, and you'll, I'll watch you play through a few more rounds, use a few more special abilities, maybe I'll actually get some colonies on the board, which is what this game is all about, and start getting some of these special powers, like the Alien Relic Ship, Ooh, um, or any number of other things. So you can hit the button that's on screen if you'd like to see some more, uh, or you can hit the other button, go to Final Thoughts in five, four, three, two, one.